All right, we've got another proof that we're gonna roll right into. It's called the congruent supplements theorem. So what the congruent supplements theorem says is that if I have two angles that are, maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but if I have two angles that are supplementary to the same angle or congruent angles, then they're also congruent. So let's write that down in if-then form. So if two angles are supplementary to the same, and we'll put in parentheses, or congruent, and we'll talk about that in a second, angles, comma, then they are congruent. Okay, so here's what I'm saying, and we'll illustrate this with a diagram, is that if I have two angles that are supplementary to the same angle, so let's say I've got an angle here. Uh, this is a pretty good angle. We'll call this angle one. And then I have got another angle over here that's supplementary to it. We'll call this angle two. And then I also have a third angle over here. We'll call it angle three which is supplementary to my first one. So if I have two angles, angles two and three, that are supplementary to the same angle, angle one, then they have to be congruent to each other. So what that means and what it's saying here is, you know, you can pick, you can test this out and pick whatever angle measure you want. Let's say that, uh, you know, the measure of angle uh, one is, let's say, 120 degrees. So measure of angle two, what does it have to be to be supplementary to angle one? Well, the measure of angle two then has to be 60 degrees. And the measure of angle three, what does it have to be just to be supplementary to angle one? Well, it also has to be 60 degrees. And so if I have two angles that are supplementary to the same angle, their measures must then be congruent. And this goes for, and this is this other part here, uh, so if two angles are supplementary to the same or congruent angle, so like if I had another angle, angle four in here, and I said that angle two is supplementary to angle one, and angle three is supplementary to angle four, and one and four are congruent to each other, it's just this kind of this chain of logic here, but those two angles, two and three, will still be congruent to each other. So this is a congruent supplement theorem. Uh, to prove this then, we need, of course, our diagram, which we have here, and then we need our givens and our proofs. So my givens are, if two angles are supplementary to the same or congruent angle. So I'm just gonna prove the to the same angle part uh, and then the congruent angle part would be just an obvious extension. Uh, but if two angles are supplementary to the same angle, so I need to say that two angles are supplementary to the same angle. So uh, angle two is supplementary to angle one. And then I need angle three is supplementary to angle one. So if two angles are supplementary to the same angle, that's what I have here, what am I trying to prove? Well, I'm trying to prove is this then part, then they are congruent. So what I'm trying to prove is that angle two is congruent to angle three. Okay, that's what I'm trying to prove, that's what I'm gonna work on here. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so what we've got is statement number one, is that angle two is supplementary to angle one, that's given to me. Uh, angle two, or no, sorry, statement two, angle three is supplementary to angle one. And so let me just stop and emphasize this one more time. Whenever I'm trying to prove something, that means that my givens should reflect what's in my hypothesis of the theorem that I'm trying to prove. And then my proof statement should reflect what's in the conclusion of my theorem that I'm trying to prove. And the reason for this is I'm trying to show no matter what, that whenever my hypothesis is true, the givens are true, that the conclusion, what's in my proof, will always follow. And if I do that, if I prove that here once, then I can use that whenever I want down the line. So uh, we've got this then. Um, all right, so I can just jump in. So how am I gonna show this? Well, whenever I wanna talk about congruence, like we've done this before, chances are right before this, I'm gonna talk about measure. Uh, and so what I really need are, are equations here that relate some measures together. Well, the only thing I know right now are about these angles being self-married to each other, and so I can put those into the equation form. What that equation would be 
is, well, using the definition of what supplementary is. And that definition is that the two angles will sum to be 180 degrees. So I'll go ahead and use that to my advantage. So statement three here will be that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is equal to 180 degrees. You know, I did this because I really had no choice. Like, even if I'm not thinking ahead, like, what else am I supposed to do with the fact that they're supplementary? Nine times out of ten, if I'm giving something supplementary to each other, I'm probably going to end up saying that their measure is to be 180 degrees. So, I'll go ahead and use my definition here. So, two angles are supplementary. Supplementary. If and only if their measures sum to 180 degrees. All right, where does this come from? This comes from statement number one, where I said that they're supplementary, and which backs up my statement here that they'll be that they'll sum to be 180 degrees. And I'll do the exact same thing for uh, statement number two here, which is that angle three and angle one are supplementary. So let's see, number four, uh, I will say that the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle one is equal to 180 degrees. I'll use the exact same reason, two angles are supplementary if and only if their measures sum to 180 degrees. Measures sum to 180 degrees. Where did this come from? Well, where did I say that these two angles are supplementary? I said that back in two. Okay. So now I've got these great equations here that have, uh, well, the angles that I'm looking to talk about, angles two and angle three in them, so that's great. Uh, so how can I combine these into one equation that contains both angle two and angle three? And the answer to that is, well, I've got that these two things are both equal to 180 degrees. And if I have two things that are equal to the same thing, what does that mean? Well, of course, that they're equal to each other. And so my statement five here can be that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two will be equal to the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle one. And the reason for that is the transitive property. Whenever I have two things that are equal to the same thing, they will then, of course, be equal to each other. That's a transit property. What two statements am I linking together using a transit property? That would be statements three and four. And so now, now I'm really close to getting what I want. I want just angle two and angle three congruent to each other. And so I've got this pesky, you know, angle one in here that I want to get rid of. And so, well, let's just subtract it out. So statement number six, I'm going to subtract out the measure of angle one, measure of angle one from both sides equals the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle one minus the measure of angle one. And the, what allows me to do that, of course, is the subtraction property of equality. Okay, where did that come from? That came from statement number five. And so now I just, just need to simplify this. This is statement seven then. Uh, so what I'm left with is that the measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle three, which is almost exactly what I want. How did I do this? I simplified simplification from where the previous statement, number six. Okay, and so now what did my proof say is that the angles are congruent to each other. So that will be my last statement that they are congruent to each other. And the reason for that, of course, will just be the definition of congruence. Two angles are congruent if and only if their measures are equal. All right. So now that we've finished out this proof, well, we just need a citation here back to seven, where I said their measures are equal. Um, the great thing is, and the reason we spent our time on this, was because I can now use this theorem. Now that I've proven it, I can use this theorem to save me time moving forward. So instead of having two angles that are supplementary to the same angle, and then having to go through eight steps to prove them uh, congruent, what I can do is I can just invoke the congruent supplements theorem here to go straight from having two angles supplementary to the same angle 
to saying statement number eight here that they'll be congruent. And so that eliminates for me next time one, two, three, four, five steps that I won't have to show, all because I proved in this theorem. And so now moving forward, I can use it whenever I want.